Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're going to be looking at Back Issue Magazine from August of 2016. And this is the 80s ladies issue, so you know this is going to be fun. Anyway, if you've never seen Back Issue Magazine, you should definitely check it out. It's like the best publication about comic books in my mind. Uh, it's Back Issue, so it definitely focuses on like comics from... I don't know, you know, yesteryear, whatever that means. Like, I'd say from the 90s and before. Um, they have lots of great articles and interview and unseen art. And uh, this is 80s ladies. So, Electra Assassin was a big mini series in the 80s. It was just so unlike anything you've ever seen, painted by Bill Sienkiewicz and written by Frank Miller. And it just really took off. and sort of changed the landscape and opened the door for painted comics. Um, they were met with some resistance by Marvel at first, but they pushed through and did it anyway. And uh, it's those rubble moves that get awesomeness like this done. And um, Jim Shooter was a big uh, roadblock, apparently. It's funny, I don't know if, uh, you know, he's got a huge reputation of... Uh, holding back a lot of projects and creators and stuff. So, I mean, in the long run, you know, an editor edits, you know, sometimes uh, things do need to be pared down and controlled, but it makes you wonder how much greatness was lost because of that. But I guess we'll never know unless somebody wants to do a video or something on it. I don't think I want to do a video on that. That's kind of a negative spin. But here we go to another, the 80s lady, if you will, Dazzler. Look at that fantastic painted cover. They really, really put a lot into this character and really wanted her to succeed. And um, she was based on the dying fad concept of disco. Casablanca Records was doing some deal with Marvel to basically make a comic book character and she would have her own record and the record side of it fell through. But luckily we got Disco Dazzler and um, I just did a video on that cover with that photo shoot. That was really cool. Um, Danny Fingereth is a longtime writer of Dazzler, and he really wanted to make her legit in the Marvel Universe and because everyone kind of played her off like a joke. And w you're seeing all this beautiful Bill Sienkiewicz art. This is the Dazzler, the movie graphic novel that uh, he painted the cover for. He did a lot of Dazzler covers. I love this. This is a riff on Michael Jackson's Thriller. So we get to see Allison Blair as a zombie years and years and years before Marvel Zombies. Imagine that. Um, but uh, then there was a point when Dazzler sort of superheroed up and took this new direction. This cover was so great um, with Wolverine and uh, Colossus guest starring. And I think obviously that must have been a move to uh, get more sales, but Paul Chadwick of Concrete fame actually took over writing and penciling and I really enjoyed it. I like what he brought to the table. I like his art. I like his writing. I think he's good. Um, I don't think it lasted too much longer than that but hey they gave it their old college try she went on to join the x-men so all is not lost um but this uh, this magazine is great they do their research so there's a lot of interesting history that you may not not have known about and of course wonder woman she's an 80s lady because she's this is years before wonder woman 84 but She's an everything lady because she's persevered over, you know, 80 years now, I guess. I think her 80th anniversary is coming up, and that's crazy to believe that this uh, character has been around so long. Call her Captain Marvel or Photon or Pulsar or Spectrum. I prefer Captain Marvel. She'll always be Captain Marvel for me. I think... Uh, Marvel made a huge mistake not making her the main Captain Marvel. I'm so glad she showed up on WandaVision, and she'll probably do much better things there than she ever would have otherwise. But, I mean, you know, you talk about inclusion and wanting to, like, you know, have diversity in characters. So 
I'm all for that, but I, I would rather them use like an existing African-American character who deserves the spotlight. So I'm really happy to see her in WandaVision. So that is really cool. And I've just always loved her costume and she just had a cool personality. She was just very like matter of fact, got the job done. And um, I don't know, she just looked cool. I like the way her powers work. She has light power, she could turn into light. Great painted cover by Tom Palmer there, who's uh, mostly known as a very heavy-handed anchor. And uh, he did a great run on the Avengers with John B. Sema. I loved their art together on that. And Captain Marvel was definitely a big part of that team. You know, she's come and gone since then. And she's, and what are they doing to her there with the braids? That's, I don't know. But, um, you know, that's not that bad, but... So, either way, it's good to see her back. Somerset Holmes, don't remember or heard of her, that 80s lady. But, you know, there was a lot of, like, independent comic books in the 80s and stuff. I guess as many as there are now, if not more. Who knows? There was a big surge of them. The Charmed and Charged Life of Lady Quark. Uh, Steve Lytle, rest in peace, true this piece. Um, we remember her from Crisis on Infinite Earths. I love the way George Paris drew her. Just a couple of pages stuck together. Lady Quark. Such a funny... Long before Lady Gaga, there was Lady Quark. I know, get to flipping, right, guys? This is fun. Some little humor pages there. Dakota North. I remember her. I'm surprised I didn't... You know, I was... Uh, drawn to uh, female-centric books a lot, but this one never was really calling my name. Not to say it wasn't good. I'm sure it is. I'm sure I'd love it if I read it. I was just thumbing through this last night, and uh, so this is uh, Adam Kubert's art. This must have been one of his first, like, books. I know that uh, he did lettering. Him and his brother did lettering, and then he did inking. But this is so great, and you can tell that his dad is, like, such a professional, probably to make him learn this perspective, and that looks fantastic. I love this art right here. I didn't realize how good he was so early in his career, and I think that's awesome. It's from Comico, um, one of my favorite comic book publishers of the 80s. And I don't know where this character stands today. I haven't seen her in years. I don't. She must have died with... Uh, Kamiko, I guess. Um, but it looks like a fun book, nonetheless. Anyway, so this is Back Issue Magazine. But Tomorrow's, I guess, is the publisher, but they do all kinds of great publications about comic books. Um, you've probably read some, like, you know, the Kirby Collector, and they do, like, art books and stuff like that, so they're definitely a great contributor to the Comic Canyon. Oh, I love this ad on the back here. This is so cool. I barely remember the Gilligan cartoon, um, Adam Ant, I don't remember that, but I hear they're bringing back Saturday morning cartoons, and I really hope they do, because what would the world be without Saturday morning cartoons? I mean, you've got the Herculoids here, uh, Space Ghost, and Johnny Quest. I mean, what more do you need? So anyway, that's Back Issue Comic, or Back Issue. This is a great publication about comic books. I just wanted to show you guys an issue. Maybe definitely pick it up. I think you can get them online. And uh, please subscribe to my channel and hit like and all that good stuff. And I will talk to you guys soon and bring you some more content. And take it easy. All right, thanks.